Okay, welcome. This is an introduction to connecting multiple representations of an example of motion that is uh, motion in a straight line at a constant speed, in other words, constant velocity. And let's just imagine we collect some data using a motion sensor. Um, a motion sensor can track your distance over time, and if you're moving in the same direction at the same speed, let's assume that you start at time zero, zero meters away from the motion sensor, and one second later, you're moving quickly to four meters away. Two seconds later, eight meters away. And you see the pattern. You're gaining four meters each second, and by the time four seconds passes, you are now 16 meters away. And if you were to graph that data, what would it look like? Well, first, we'll look at the four seconds on the x-axis. The distance, we'll scale this in uh, units of meters every four meters. And we will plot our points, uh, zero, zero, one second, four meters, two seconds, eight meters, three seconds, 12 meters, four seconds, 16 meters. And the first obvious pattern looking at the points is that they're collinear. And if they're collinear, that means there is a line that will pass through them, a line of best fit, if you will. And if you examine the slope of that line, you can determine the velocity at which you're moving. So, quick reminder, uh, this is an example of a body moving at a constant speed in the same direction, in other words, constant velocity. And if you measure the rate at which you move, the rise over the run, you will rise four meters and run one second. In the next second of time, you will once again rise four meters, run one second. In the next second of time, you will once again rise four meters, run one second, and the next second of time, you will once again rise four meters and run one second. Slope between any two points on this line is constant. So you can see the slope is four meters of rise per one second of run, in other words, four meters per second. And since we're measuring the, the rate of change of distance over time, the slope of this graph represents the change in your position versus the change in your time, which by definition is your average velocity. Anytime you're measuring the rate of change of distance on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis, by definition, the slope of that, which is the ratio of distance to time, is a measure of your average velocity for that interval of time. And the nice thing about looking at this data, it's very simple. You can look at any two points. Um, and you're guaranteed you'll always get a, a rate of four meters per second. So what would that look like on a graph representing the velocity versus time? Well, first you can see that your, your, your velocity is always four meters per second at every second. Um, you are constantly moving at four meters per second. We're going to assume at time zero you just start moving. So while a line is an infinite collection of points, you can always think of, you know, well, we've only plotted four points. Every position on this line represents a point that is collinear with the other. And so you're guaranteed that you are constantly moving at four meters per second at every interval of time. And if you plot that, you'll get a nice horizontal line for all four seconds. Constant velocity, four meters per second. And if you wanted to ask the question, okay, so how far do I run if I'm running for four seconds at this same rate. There's a few simple things you can do. You could rearrange this equation and recognize that the, the, the change in distance is simply your average velocity times the time interval. And if your average velocity is simply four meters per second for a time of four seconds, 
the units of seconds cancel out when you multiply this, you're left with 4 times 4, or 16 meters of displacement. If you look at the graph, another simple way to think about this is to analyze when you multiply velocity times time of this graph, you're actually calculating the area of this rectangle because the area of this rectangle, you think of it as the height of the rectangle, which is 4, times the length of the rectangle, which is 4, then of course the area becomes 4 meters per second tall times 4 seconds long, which is 16 meters. It's another way to examine total distance or displacement traveled for any interval of time when you're looking at a velocity versus time graph.